Hi, I'm Augie DeBleek, and this is a little PipelineComics.com lunchtime video from the front seat of my car. What I usually do in here a lot of times at lunchtime, I'll be reading a comic book that I'll review later on in Pipeline. But today, I want to talk about something I posted up today at PipelineComics.com, which was a link to a column I wrote last week for ComicBook.com, which goes into a couple of recent Mark Millar miniseries, Empress and Reborn. Empress was the one that Stuart Immonen had drawn. It was originally published, I believe, at Marvel. And Reborn was the one Greg Capullo drew that was published at Image. And I think, actually, Reborn is a better comic than Empress, but I can't argue with the art in either case. But when I was reading the collected edition of Empress, it included all the letters, columns, and, and back pages material, that kind of stuff. And there was a letter from a fan who said that they enjoyed the series more starting with the second issue because it felt like the first issue was just the first act of a movie. And you can kind of see where Mark Millar has a bit of the reputation for writing movies and comics all at the same time. Or at least he writes comics and sells the properties to movies. I don't know if he's ever actually adapted any of them himself. Usually someone else does that kind of work. But he does tend to focus on the comic books. I'll give him credit for that. And he's just a kind of a shrewd uh, businessman slash freelancer. He knows how to make this stuff work for him. So he's very uh, he's a very easy target to poke fun at. We've all poked fun at various comics in the past 15 years or so since you know, the days when you go to San Diego Comic-Con before Hollywood took it over completely and you'd see the guys in their blazers and with their, uh, they'd have their clipboard with them and they're going from table to table looking to see which properties they could, they could option and then bury and we'll never see anything from again. Uh, one of the great examples of this was Scott Lobdell had a book called Hellhole, which he did in Hellhole Vision, which was basically uh, taking the script, turning into storyboards, Adam Polina drew them, and the little script excerpts were underneath each panel. Uh, yeah. So Mark Millar obviously is susceptible to this kind of, of thing happening to him, but I think there's a, a bigger issue here, and that's with just basic storytelling. And this is what I wrote about today, again, at PipelineComics.com. Read now, support the Patreon, be a friend. Um, and that is... The three-act structure maps pretty well to a comic book miniseries. I think it maps really well to a five-issue, maybe six-issue series. Uh, Mark Millar does, you know, seven, eight, nine, whatever it takes for his particular stories. But to say the first issue is the first act, that has nothing to do with the movie. That has to do with pretty much good structure of a comic book, if you think about it. I mean, the first act is the inciting incident. It's, it's the part where the storyteller has to establish the base, the, the normal world, and then have that event, that inciting incident that starts the rest of the story along its path. That's where everything changes, and, and our hero, or our protagonist at least, uh, starts chasing things down until they get to the very bitter end. The second act is the longest part, and the third act, again, is usually pretty short, only the last, in case of a comic book, maybe the last issue or two, where just when the protagonist or the good guy has his back against the wall and looks like all help, all um, all hope is lost, uh, they fight back, rally back, beat the big bad guy, and win the day. That's your typical three-act structure. Talk to Robert McKee, read his storybook, you'll get the whole thing. That'll be great. So, a comic book that has a first issue being the first act, to me, just kind of sounds like good structural writing. I mean... Yeah, you like different things. You don't want everything to fit a, a specific pattern. You don't want everything to be sort of, you know, textbook. You want it to work on its own. But generally speaking, if you're going to write a, a, a mini series with a three act structure, which is generally the way most people consume their entertainment, whether it is in a comic book or in a movie or in a TV show, any of that kind of stuff, you think in those terms, it'll help out a lot. So it's not necessarily the, the side effect of being based on a movie. It's, in some ways, just good comic book writing. If the first issue is the first act, first act that's great in a miniseries. If the first issue stretches out across the first two issues, a little bit iffier. If it goes to a third issue, all hope is lost. And again, yes, I know there are specific examples where they did these kinds of things in the movies and it worked a lot better. But generally speaking, first issue as the first act works really well. So we shouldn't complain about that. We shouldn't necessarily always say that that is a holdover from a movie pitch or a movie proposal. That's all I wanted to say. So again, go to PipelineComics.com for more writing on that and more of the most recent European comics that I've reviewed, such as The Great The Campbells, Volumes 1 and 2, now available on Comixology in English. I highly recommend it. It is a great book. Please read it because I still want 3 and 4 to come out. I assume they're going to, but 
If they sell a lot, I'm sure the odds are pretty good. They'll get them out even faster, maybe. Hopefully. Thanks for watching. I'm Augie DeBleek. I'll talk to you soon.